Welcome back to 1834. This fourth match is tied at one win each, and today's guest commentator is Sun Tzu, the ancient author of The Art of War, and he says, The greatest victory is that which requires no battle. But MacDonald is having none of that and opens with e4. We have e5 in response, knight to f3, knight to c6, and now bishop to c4, bishop to c5, and MacDonald goes for the Evans Gambit. Uh, we've seen this once before in match two, game number one, which MacDonald won. Apparently, he studied the opening with Captain Evans himself, the inventor of this gambit, and Le accepts the gambit. We have c3 now, and last time, Le Bourdonnais went for bishop to a5. This time, he goes all the way, all the way back to e7. MacDonald advances in the center with d4. We have d6 from Le Bourdonnais, and now queen to b3, lining up on this f-pawn. Le Bourdonnais plays knight to f5, forking the queen and the bishop, but this f-pawn is still under attack. Now Sun Tzu says that opportunities ought to be seized, and MacDonald should capture this pawn, but instead MacDonald plays queen to a4 with check. Okay, it's blocked by c6, and now the queen and the bishop are in danger of getting forked by the pawn with b5, so the bishop goes back to d3. We have b5 regardless, it still attacks the queen, so the queen retreats all the way back to c2. Sun Tzu says that he who prepares will win, so developing the queen to c7 would be good, but instead Le Bourdonnais moves his bishop a second time to f6. And now some pawns exchange in the center, and then from here both players just develop normally. We have MacDonald castling. Le Bourdonnais develops his kingside knight. MacDonald goes bishop to a3. Castles from Le Bourdonnais, and now uh, MacDonald develops his second knight to d2. Bishop to e6 in the center, and now rook on a to d1, x-raying the queen behind these two... Uh, the bishop and the knight here, and now we have queen to c7 from the Bordenay getting out of the way. Both players are now fully developed, they're both castled and all their pieces are out, and the game continues. Knight to b3, knight to c4, and here MacDonald should maybe think about capturing this knight, because it would get rid of his bad bishop. As Sun Tzu says, when your officers are weak, the result is insubordination. But instead of this, MacDonald plays bishop to c1. Now here, Le Bourdonnais could advance his c-pawn, and then after capturing the knight and the bishop capturing back, he is starting to crowd the enemy and to impose his will upon him. But instead of advancing this pawn and doing what we said, we have rook on f to d8. He's getting upon this open file here. So still a nice move. We have h3 from MacDonald, and now c5, better late than never. And from here, both players start to maneuver their knights. Knight to h2, knight to g6, and uh, knight to g4, and knight back to d6. And now it's the bishop's turn. Bishop back to e2, adding another defender to this knight, and Le Bourdonnais brings his bishop back to e7. Now from here, MacDonald decides that he's going to push f4, and uh, this seemingly weakens his entire kingside, so Sun Tzu isn't too impressed with this, but he tries to put a positive spin on it. Appear weak so that the enemy may grow arrogant. Let your plans be dark and impenetrable as night. Well... Okay, let's see how this works out for MacDonald. First, Le Bourdonnais captures the pawn, the bishop captures back, and now the knight captures the bishop. Um, so, um, in the mists of chaos, there is also opportunity, so the rook captures the knight, and now the remaining knight comes to c4, and as it does so, it reveals an attack on this rook, and it also threatens a fork on the queen and the uh, other rook here, so what's going to happen? Well, we have rook back to f3, which defends this forking square whilst also getting out of the path of the queen. We have now bishop capturing the knight on g4, and of course this completely destroys the king's size structure for MacDonald. Uh, he captures back with this pawn. Perhaps sensing another opportunity, Le Bourdonnais plays his knight to e5, which attacks the rook and the pawn. Now, moving the rook away would actually defend the pawn with the bishop, so which way does MacDonald decide to go? Well, perhaps bringing it back to f1 would be safer, but as Sun Tzu once said, on difficult ground, press on, so MacDonald plays it over to h3. Now, I think he's trying to line up here on the h-pawn, and watch out for this because it will become important later on. So we have the rook captures on d1, and now the queen captures back, and the other rook comes across to threaten the queen. 
Now we have a queen to f1 moving aside, and he's maneuvering around to this square to try to get back on the h-pawn. We have c4 pressing ahead, and now knight to d4 from Macdonald. Uh, bishop to c5 now, pinning the knight against the king. Macdonald continues with his plan of queen to f5 and lining up against the h-pawn, but Sun Tzu says this is just bravery without forethought and g6, so the queen has to retreat all the way back and it goes to f2. Here, b4 and taking out the rearmost white pawn would be devastating from Labordne, um, combined with this pinage going on here. But first he prepares this move with queen to e7, and Macdonald starts to unpin king to h1. We have b4 now, and what does Macdonald do? Well, he doesn't capture, he brings his queen to e3, and the pawn takes out c3. Does Macdonald capture this dangerous pass pawn here? No, he decides to go on the attack. Well, this is the Macdonald that we know and love. Um, he's again lining up against the h-pawn, but Le Bourdonnais simply pushes f6 to reveal the defense from the queen. And we come to a very interesting point in this game. Macdonald plays knight to e6, and this knight is undefended. He's trying to give it up in order to deflect the queen and infiltrate and finally capture the h7-pawn. Sun Tzu says that those that are skilled at making the enemy move do so by creating a situation to which he must conform. They entice him with something he is certain to take. But sadly, he is not talking about Macdonald's skills. Le Bourdonnais just captures here. And now, Macdonald is certain to take the h7 pawn. It's very enticing. And he does so. And this comes with check. We have uh, the king moving across out of the check to f8. And Macdonald now has to face the reality that he just gave up his horse for nothing. Le Bourdonnais was just baiting him with the h-pawn the whole time. So very well done, Le Bourdonnais. Uh, there's nothing to do for Macdonald here. He can't just come into the corner here. The queen's going to block and he's a horse down. So instead he just brings his queen over to h7, tries to cause some trouble over here. But by now it's just far too late. Uh, the bishop comes back to e7, uh, trying to add some more defense to the king, and he certainly does have enough defense. The rook captures the c3 pawn, and we have queen to b6. And if you look very carefully, Macdonald's queen has got nowhere to run to. It can either give itself up for nothing, or exchange itself for a minor piece, or accept the exchange. Of course, he accepts the exchange. The pawn captures back. A4 from Macdonald, bishop to B4 from Le Bourdonnais threatening the rook, so the rook retreats to C1. And now this pawn here is passed and looking very dangerous. It just comes forward to C3. Macdonald brings his king to H2, trying to get out of the corner, but Le Bourdonnais just brings his rook down to D2 and threatens the bishop. So let's just take a quick look at what's going on here. Well, the bishop's under attack, of course, but it's the only thing defending this pawn. So if it's going to move somewhere, say f1, the knight's coming in to capture the pawn and it comes with check and all sorts of trouble. Because on top of this, this rook is stuck guarding this dangerous past pawn and this dark square bishop is coming into a3 to chase it away. So it's looking very, very ominous indeed for Macdonald. He agreed and decided to resign the game. The board mate is now winning two games to one. One final comment from Sun Tzu, talking to Macdonald, he says, He who wishes to fight must first count the cost. See you next time.